Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. Now, some of you may not believe it, but I do actually listen to what a lot of you ask me. And something that has come up a lot over the past two weeks is people saying that their computers have got stuck, they've jammed up, what do they do? It's not connecting, something's going wrong. And in fact, some of you have even said, there are moments when my phone just doesn't work properly, what should I do? Well, the simplest solution to all of this before actually looking for more technical things is actually just to switch things off. It includes your phone, your computer, and if you're not getting an internet connection, try that with your router as well. Switch it off, leave it maybe for a minute or so, and switch it back on. Same applies to phones, and it's probably a good idea to switch those off every now and again and just restart them. It just sort of clears the memory and does a bit of tidying up. And the same with computers as well. Make sure you switch them off every now and again. It does do a little bit of maintenance and tidying up. So with your computers, it's really important that if something does go wrong on your computer, don't just pull the cable out if you can't get it to switch off. That can actually cause a bit of damage, power spikes and things like that. What you should do is just hold down the power button, and this applies to pretty much any computer or laptop. Hold the power button in for a few seconds. Your computer will then just switch off safely. Then switch it on again. Sometimes you might notice it takes a little bit of time for it to restart longer than normal. It might be doing a bit of tidying up if something had gone wrong. If your computer is in the middle of updates, wait. If you can, unless, of course, it looks like hours later something has gone terribly wrong. But updates can take a while, particularly on Windows. And Mac has a new update this week as well. It looks like they're preparing for something, perhaps something to do with the new iPad software that they're releasing. It sounds like it's a good update. I'm just trying it now. So far, so good. Updates are normally a very good idea. So just remember, if things aren't working properly and it's a digital device, basically it's a computer and it needs to be switched off every now and again. And if you're having trouble with it, then what you need to do is not pull out the plug at the back, but to actually hold down the power button to switch it off. With routers, quite often there isn't a power button. You have to just unplug it and plug it back in. Sometimes it's worth just trying pulling it out plugging it back in again and seeing what happens. I have this as well with my Skybox. I had a problem with it recently. Pulled the power out, left it out for a minute or so, plugged it back in. I did have to wait for a while for it to reboot everything, which was a little bit worrying, um, but it did all work in the end. So that is quick solutions to what to do, just in case something does go wrong with your computer, phone, Skybox, whatever it is. Switching it off and back on again. And now on to this week's App of the Week. This week's App of the Week is something called Hidden Sky. It's basically something called Augmented Reality. That's when you use the camera, and this is on my iPhone, to look at the world around you, and it then overlays digital things there. You may have seen some time ago I did one on something called Work Snug. Um, but what this does is I can hold it up, point it in a direction, and I can choose what I want to look at, and what's going on in the hidden sky is basically I can look for planets, the moon, and also for the International Space Station as well, and I can see where it is. So what it's got is a little arrow there, and it's pointing to me towards where the International Space Station is. So if I keep pointing down, there it is, I can do that, and if it was night time and it was above the horizon, I'd be able to see it. So little excellent one there. It did cost me £1.79, but I do like looking for these things, and a bit of fun. We've all just had fireworks in the UK. Skies are now clear, I hope. We've had some bad weather, but everywhere else you might have clear skies, and you might like looking for things like the International Space Station. It still gives me a buzz to watch it flying over. So that is this week's app of the week. It's called Hidden Sky. All you have to do is go to iTunes, which you can do either on your phone or on your iPad. It doesn't really work very well on an iPad because it doesn't have a camera, but you can also do this on your computer as well. Search for Hidden Sky. I paid £1.79 for it. There's a lot of free apps out there, but every now and again I like one and I think it's worth paying for. So, on to this week's new tutorials. 
I must apologise, I didn't put up last week's tutorial as quickly as expected. It took a little bit longer to get everything done. It was to get videos off of YouTube and watch them offline, that is when you don't have a connection. And I use something called VLC for that, which I talked about last week, which you can use on your iPhone and on your iPad and on your computer, whether it be Windows or a Mac. So I've now caught up on that. I'm now just putting a whole load of tutorials together. I've got some for Excel that I'll be putting up sometime in the next week. This one actually takes a cell where you might have a name such as mine, Gary Schwartz, and you want to split it into two separate cells. So it puts a first name in one and your last name in the other cell. Common problem when you've got databases and you import information and you want to take that data and split it up. So check out that tutorial, I'll be putting that on as soon as I can, it will be sometime in the next few days. So check that out. Thanks for watching and see you next week.